Hello and welcome to Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. Why do I... dot dot dot... No. Why? Why do I know? These things... Where am I? What the hell happened? Oh my god, people! You have been chosen! Ice won't melt! Chris... Uh, what? Okay, we got Titanic, we got science, we got... Hi hypothesis? The devil? Skull man? And there's a key. Gas mask dude from the Fallout games? Okay. <laughs> what the? Okay, seek a way out. Okay, that seems like a direction. Ah! Seek a door that carries a nine. Nine hours. That is the time you'll be given to make your escape. We got nine persons. And nine doors! Now it is time. Let our game begin! Ah! Okay. Uh-huh. Well. <laughs> welcome to, as I said before, welcome to Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. I decided to combine both of my past series, uh, the Persona games, with the Cubescape games. And I found this... Okay, wait. No, we don't need that. Skip. Skip that. And I've decided to um, sort of go with a room escape game that's also like a visual novel type of thing. So sort of combining both of those different styles into a weird and hopefully fun and good thing of its own. Yeah, this is a great intro. Start. Uh, yeah, save slot. Saving, da da da. Finish saving. Okay. Alright, let's go. This game is fiction. All names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. Okay, so nobody's gonna sue Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors anytime soon. Waves crashing in the background. Are we on the Titanic? This was in the intro. Looks pretty titanic -y. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Boom! Boom? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, the Titanic just blew up, which is an interesting way to start a game. Because I'm pretty sure it hit an iceberg, not a... Jesus Christ. Junpei? Fucking Junpei? God damn it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. That's who we got stuck with in this series. As they adjusted to the light, he realized that he didn't recognize his surroundings. Ow! Says Junpei. With a crack, Junpei's head connected with something metal. He rolled over and threw out his hand to steady himself, but he found himself groping at empty air. Oh no! His balance lost, and his still fuzzy mind struggling to understand what was going on, Junpei tumbled down to the cold gray floor. Oh jeez. Oh ouch, god damn it! Yeah! What the hell? Junpei glared around the room, still trying to determine where he'd woken up. The fall had shaken the last cobwebs of sleep from his mind, and finally, he understood where he'd fallen from. It was a bed! Oh my god! Wow. The dramatic revelations just keep coming. A three-level bunk bed, in fact. Junpei had fallen, apparently. We don't know if it's for sure. I mean, we... Neither confirmed nor deny at the time, but it looks like he has fallen, apparently, from the topmost bunk. His shoulder hurt, his knee hurt, his hip hurt, his entire body hurt. He could feel a bump forming on his forehead where he'd slammed it against the low ceiling. 
He wondered if that bump was the reason he felt his vision wavering a bit, but that seemed unlikely. At first, he thought that the tremor that ran through his legs was just another effect of his rude awakening. But as he looked around, he realized it was real. The whole room was shaking. Was it an earthquake, he wondered? It didn't seem likely. It was shaking far too quickly for an earthquake. Then again, Jumbei had no idea what it was, if not an earthquake. He tried to tell himself it was important. Okay, I gotta solve the, the mystery of how to broom the, the hour and the persons. Junpei rubbed the growing bump on his head and gingerly climbed to his feet. His balance regained, he finally took his first good look around the room. Okay, there's a stove, he got a sink, and muttered to himself. Where am I? Aw, oh, jeez. His pain momentarily forgotten in the face of the confusion of his circumstances, Junpei looked around the room once again. So he's just... What the fuck are you doing, Junpei? The room is shaking, okay? And your reaction to just waking up in this bizarre, strange situation is just sort of... What? This... This is in my room. What? Jesus Christ. We need a little bit more action, Junpei, you know? Then, suddenly, as they had begun, the tremors ceased. So now we're in the ocean. Now it's going to start flooding. A cold silence fell over the room. From somewhere far away, Junpei could hear the sound of metal squeaking. He felt his stomach tighten. There were a thousand things a sound could have been. But none of the things he could think of were good. In an attempt to distract himself, Junpei looked around the room once more. It's apparently his favorite thing to do. There was a stove that looked more antique than functional. It's like a big pot on it, though. The three level bunk beds had mattresses that were so thin that they were little more than blankets. Up five. There's a door. It has a number on it. That seems important. On the other side of the room was an identical bed, and set in the wall between the beds was a slightly dirty iron door. The first thing Junpei noticed about the door was a number roughly emblazoned across it. On the surface of the door, in red paint, someone had written... Five! Five? Oh my god. What's this five mean? I've never seen this number before. Suspicious and still utterly confused, Junpei had d approached the door slowly. <clears throat> so he's just been sitting in this room just looking around for like 10 minutes and then he thinks, maybe I should try and leave. Maybe I should open the door. He really is a Junpei, isn't he? Standing at last, at last, in front of the door, Junpei grabbed hold of the L-shaped handle. A push yielded no movement, and a pull the same result. A few more tries cemented the truth in Junpei's mind. It would not open. It didn't matter how much he pushed and shoved. The handle would not budge. Next to the door was an odd-looking device that reminded Junpei of a card reader. It didn't take a genius to figure out that this odd-looking device was keeping the door shut. Junpei knocked hard on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Hey! Hello? Is anyone there? Open the door! There was no response. Junpei threw his left fist into the door and stopped. What the hell is this? He wasn't really sure what else to say. On his left wrist was a bracelet of a sort he had never seen before. In the center was a large LCD display. It looked nothing else so much as a watch. No, sorry, it looked like nothing else so much as a watch, but it clearly was not that. After all, it showed only a single number. Five? The, 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 that's the same as the door! 
True, the numbers were the same, but he had no idea what that might mean. All he knew was that it was strange, and new, and he wanted it off. Junpei flipped his hand over as if to remove a watch, but the other side of the bracelet was solid. No buckle, no clasp, nothing. He sighed and flipped the thing back over. There were a number of rivets around the rim of the face. Perhaps. He pushed them, but nothing happened. On a watch, they must be dials for adjusting date or time, but on this bracelet, they did nothing. Junpei was at a loss. What was he going to do? Growing more desperate, he began to tug at it. However, Yerg, damn, ugh, it's no good. Damn thing won't come off. A steel ring ran from the face around Junbei's wrist and back into the face. He wouldn't be pulling the bracelet off any time in the near future. What the hell is the deal with this thing? Frustration and desperation were beginning to mix as the reality of the situation began to dawn fully on Junpei. It's the most dramatic fucking prose and I love it. So much was happening and none of it made any sense. Junpei felt as though he were about to explode. Where am I? And why the hell am I here? Why? Why? What the hell happened to- What? Fuck? Whoa. Saw the guy from, um, that, that game, what, what was it called? Uh, that, the Metro game? It was at that moment that he noticed the window. Oh, look. A window. The window is round, rimmed, and riveted brass. Like a window from an early 20th century ship. Wow! That window is round, rimmed in riveted brass, and looks like a window from an early 20th century ship. Wait. Am I in a ship? Dun, dun, dun! Wow. We really have an ace detective here. Real Sherlock Holmes. Junpei walked slowly towards the window. He could see nothing beyond it but thick, impenetrable darkness. Junpei squinted, trying to see something, anything. It was at that moment. Before we do this, I want to try to see what the, um... Okay. Huh. So we got a map. <clears throat> so we got a map. We cannot access the map. Cannot access the calculator. Uh, nor can we access the file, but we can save, I suppose. So there's that. Let's just get rid of that. Was so at that moment? Oh shit! Uh, what the? You gotta be kidding me, Doc! Who? Wh what the hell is going on here? Oh. Well, that was the end of June pay. Fucking dumbass, just sat on the floor for five goddamn, like, fifteen fucking minutes before he realized that he was in a sinking ship. A crack split the glass of the window, and for a moment, Junpei just stared at it. That seems to be all Junpei does, is just stare at things. Then the window burst, and water began to pour into the room. What the hell? God damn it! Poor bastard. Junpei yelled and spun around. His feet slipping on the water already coming through the window. He ran for the door. Hey, come on, guys. This isn't funny anymore. Hey, anyone? Is anyone there? Come on. If you're there, say something. <clears throat> there was no reply. As Junpei screamed and pounded on the door, the water began to rise. Roro. It was now ankle deep on the floor and rising quickly towards his knees. Things were not looking good for Junpei. You could say that. 
Not good at all. <laughs> he needed to find a way out and quickly. Junpei ran a hand across his forehead, brushing the sweat out of his eyes, and looked around the room. Whoa! Seek a way out! Okay, I'm guessing this is timed. Purpose of the escape. Purpose of each escape is to get out of the room, you dum dum. How you do that depends on the room. You search all throughout the room to discover what you'll need to do to get out. Okay, uh, we got a note from bulletin board. Ooh, we can rotate it? Oh, this is nice. So it's like an arrow type of thing. Where we sort of go. Okay, so if we go back, investigate with an item, touching an item while on the item screen, we'll select that item. I'm so, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Can we hold multiple items? Hmm. Investigate, use items on things. Okay. We got a picture frame. It's a boat. Can we do anything weird here? Can we combine the picture frame? Booyah! Combine! No, okay, that does not work. Uh, doesn't seem like there's anything hidden in the sink. This is the only drain in the room. There's a towel next to it. Could we dry up the water? Would that work? No, I don't think that would work. Uh, water just keeps pouring through the window. It's like a waterfall. I don't think shoving something into the window is going to stop the water. In other words, if I don't want to die, I need to find a way out of this room. I have to figure this out. That's a table. Water is pouring onto it like a little waterfall. What is your obsession with waterfalls, Junpei? There's a pair of simple chairs next to the table. The water's already up to the chair. Okay. Uh, take this big pot. Ooh, hey, hey. Looks like there is a key. Yeah, there's a little blue key in the bottom of this pot. Fuck yeah. Keys, we need keys and shit. So, can we open this door? That was easily enough. Show her what's the door to open here. Get out of here. It was that easy. Okay. It looks red. So we got a screwdriver. Ah, oh, so useful for stuff like this. Combining items. If you want to take two items you found and combine them, they may turn into something else. Okay. Uh, to do that, select the second item and touch the combining. Two items can be combined. You'll see nothing will happen. So, if we go here, we could unscrew something. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can do that, though. What, what, what's in this stuff? No dice, it's locked tight. Yeah, boy. Uh, yeah, I don't... We don't have anything approaching a code yet. Uh, so, these are our only five, sort of... I guess that's a lever, huh? Hey, buddy, pull it! Well, it looks like pulling on the lever just makes a weird noise. Great. Light's still red and the display hasn't changed. Damn it! Why the hell isn't this thing opening? Okay. Five. Five, huh? What does that mean? I'm guessing Junpei has never seen the number five before. Okay. Alright, we got a small key. Junpei grabbed the key and shoved it into his pocket. He intended to leave immediately, but something stopped him. His reflection stared back at him from the mirror, but he had scarcely recognized himself. What's up with my face? Sorry, Junpei, you're just ugly. that That's what we call it. His confusion was well justified. His face was drawn and pale. The dark circles under his eyes made him look as though he was nearly dead. Maybe that's just how he usually looks. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Man, what the hell happened to me? How did I end up here? Even as he said it, something in his mind opened and a memory bobbed to the surface. It was the last thing Junpei remembered before waking up in the strange room. Give me